Welcome back. It is Tuesday, September 17th in the MLB. Our four best bets are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan today. Joined by your guys' favorite special guest. Get it out, baby. The Brewers here. A 3-0 sweep to kick off Monday. Exactly what we needed. Logan had Brewers ML. Sweat free. We had Dodgers Braves under four and a half. First five. Pretty sweat free. And then we wrap up the day. Jackson Merrill over one and a half hits. Runs in RB, uh, RBIs. A home run will do for Mr. Merrill. He ended up getting two hits. A beautiful 3-0 sweep. But the goal today, Logan... We need to do it all over again. And we're going to dive into the picks in just one moment. If you are new, do us a favor. Subscribe, like, do all the good things. We appreciate you guys for supporting the channel. Comment your best bet down below. I know a lot of you have been betting uh, NFL and college the last few days. Well, now you only got some uh, baseball to bet. So we need to deliver some winners for y'all. And hopefully that is a 4-0 sweep today. And hopefully we can have some continue the momentum from yesterday. Our first pick of the day, we'll go to the parlay of the day. As always, they are on odds checker on in the pinned comment down below and in the description. We're not going to hide from it. The parlays of the day have been ice cold recently, which could mean that they're due. We normally have had pretty good track record on our MLB parlays of the day, just have been pretty unlucky the last few. Um, I like today. We're going to go cook one up, a winner for y'all. Check it out, pin comment in description. I'm going to dive into my favorite pick. I'm rocking a Rockies shirt jersey, Charlie Blackman. I need some help from him today. As I'm taking the D-backs and Rockies over 11 and a half, minus 106 on fan. Look, I need some help from the Rockies. I'm confident the D-backs can put up some runs today. I'll talk about why. Well, the Rockies, they need to bring the bats, and I think they do today against Jordan Montgomery. Now, let's dive into this game, because yesterday I really did look at the over, but something felt off there, and it was off because they combined for big five runs. They got that low-scoring uh, Coors Field game out of the system, and now we can see a classic 15-plus run game here. Now, Ryan Feltner will start for the Rockies. If you look at Feltner, when he's pitched at Coors, he's been pretty bad. 6.25 ERA, 1.58 whip. And a 319 batting average allowed at home. He's been pretty bad. His last two starts, you might be like, Austin, he's pitched well. He's been on the road in those two starts. Now he comes back at home. He could get rocked here. He's only pitched against the Arizona Diamondbacks once this year, and it was all the way back in March. March 31st, his first start of the year. Did give up five runs in five innings pitched. I was at Arizona. I'm not really going to look into that too hard. But we've talked about this uh, D-backs offense in September. The D-backs are first in batting average. First in OPS and first in WRC Plus. They've been with the best offense in baseball against righties. Didn't show it a ton yesterday against Antonio Senzatello, who returned from the IL and made his first start of the year. I'm confident they can do something to Feltner here. Also, when you get runners in scoring position, Feltner allowing a 300 batting average with two outs, it improves to 328 with runners in scoring position. I think they can get some, uh, some production on him. And if they want to blow it open and score eight plus runs off Feltner, I think this could be a matchup to do it. On the other side, Jordan Montgomery comes out of the bullpen and will start for the D-backs. Obviously, Montgomery was a starter for the majority of the season. Then they kind of threw him into that bullpen uh, role. And it was kind of whenever he came out of the bullpen, it was more so them waving the white flag. They said, all right, well, we're cooked. We're down like five runs. Throwing j -Mo. But now he's starting, and I don't love this matchup for him. Now, if you look at the Rockies, their stats versus lefties aren't great. You might be like, Austin, they're one of the worst teams against lefties. You look at who they faced, though, the last three, Rodon, Sale, and Scooble. There's not a lot better lefties out there to face, and they face three of the tougher, you know, top 10 lefties, if you will, in baseball. Montgomery is definitely far from that. He's third percentile in K percentage. If you think about the Rockies' weakness, it's strikeouts. That's what they do love to do. Only third percentile. J Mo's not getting the whiffs. He's second in expected batting average, sixth in expected ERA. They don't want to start him. There's a reason they threw him in the bullpen. They don't want to start him. But with Ryan Nelson, I believe, now on the IL, or at least missing his, his start, which should be today, they're going to have to start him. And he's only pitched once against Colorado. Six innings pitched, three earned runs. You also look at JMO, 328 batting average with runners in scoring position. So we have two guys that really struggle getting those timely outs, which is important. If we're going to run up and get a three or four run type inning, that'd be awesome. You get to the bullpens. Arizona, we've talked with them, 30th in bullpen ERA in September. The Rockies... 11th. You've watched baseball hopefully this season. You know the Rockies are much worse than 11th, and they've used some of their better arms the last, you know, two, three days. I really like runs early in this game. The first five team total, or first five total sitting at six and a half, but I also like runs late in this game. You never know in Coors Field the run, when the runs are coming, but I think they're coming today. Give me the over 11 and a half. It's my favorite game pick of the day. But Logan, throwing it to you for a winner. You had a great call yesterday. Today you're going to a late night game. Where are you going? Yeah, I see you're over, and I got to balance it out with an under that I really like. Taking the Yankees and Mariners under 7.5, minus 130 odds on FanDuel is your best value there. Now, if you're like, Logan, I got 7 on my book. Where are you getting the 7.5? I'm actually buying up a half run so that if they end on 7, we're still going to cash this bet. I mean, eight's, eight's a crucial number, and and I see them I, and, end on 7 all the time, see them end on 8 all the time. They end on 8, then it was just the wrong read. 
But if they end on six or seven, then we're going to cash this bet. And six runs is not a whole lot in, in baseball. So your margin for error is small to begin with. But I do really like this under, and you'll understand why. Uh, I think the cha- uh, there's also chances that this line moves up to seven and a half as well. And it's uh, the unfortunate part of doing this before line movement, because normally we get uh, bad CLV on, on some of our uh, total picks. Just when they're a little more on the on the dicey side and picking an under seven is, is definitely dicey. Let's talk about the starting pitchers, though, who we're backing. It's Brian Wu starting for the Mariners. 2.38 ERA, 0.82 whip for Brian Wu. I mean, he's been, to me, one of the best surprises of the year. I mean, he's he's got ace pitcher type stuff, which is crazy. Wu already faced the Yankees, went six and he's pitched zero in runs against the Yankees back in May. I, I like what I like what I saw back then. And I like what I'm seeing from him now. He's great at missing barrels and not walking batters. Wu, 100th, 100th percentile in walk percentage. That's crazy. There's nobody better. 93rd percentile in barrel percentage. 83rd percentile in hard hit percentage. If you are elite in all of those metrics, you're going you're gonna to have a really good season. And that's exactly what Wu has had. Wu has only allowed more than two earned runs in one of his last six starts. I believe that was like four earned runs. So he's been just like absolutely dialed in. He's been... Uh, a great pitcher we can trust. And against right-handed batters, only a 179 batting average allowed, 216 the left-handed batters. Both sides of the plate have really struggled against Brian Wu. I like that a lot. At home, his ERA is a ridiculous 1.66. I, I think Brian Wu is in line for a great start. And then we look at the Yankees' bats. Last 14 days versus righties, Yankees 15th of batting average, 23rd in OPS, 20th in WRC+. Plus. Sure, they're, I mean, they're middle of the pack in batting average, but back of the pack in the other run metric stats, which I mentioned yesterday, they also matter. That's why we don't just talk about batting average here. On base plus slugging and, and weighted runs created, those metrics are not that that elite for the Yankees bats. I think Brian Wu has a really solid outing. And then we go to on the other side. Luis Heal starts for the Yankees, 3.18 ERA and a 1.17 whip for Luis Heal. Now, I, I mean, he's he's been pretty good on the year as well, has his ups and downs. He's a strikeout specialist, and against the Mariners, I like that a lot. 77th percentile in whiff percentage, 82nd percentile in K percentage. Why is that Why is that a, a big? I'll tell you in a second, but he faced the Mariners back in May, went six and a third innings, pitched zero and runs, eight strikeouts. He got the swing and a miss then. I think he gets it once again today. There's a reason why people, if you play K props, Mariners should always be on your list because Mariners, 30th in strikeouts per game, 29th in runs scored at home per game. They are one of the worst offenses at home, and they are one of the worst offenses against strikeout-type pitchers. I think Luis Heal has a solid start. Might not be flawless. It might be ugly, because we know we know what Luis Heal's weakness is. It's the walks. But if you look at his game log recently, I think he's, knock on wood, like he, he's hopefully cut down on the walk problem, because he's. if you look at his last four starts, two, two, six, and two walks in his last four. I mean, the six is like, you can't have that. But... The two is encouraging, and I think if he if he hovers around that today, he is solid. And then we go to the bullpens, because I think both these starters are, are pretty in line to go six innings themselves. Last 14 days, Seattle ninth in bullpen ERA, Yankees 12th in bullpen ERA. You're having pretty much two top 10 bullpens in, in ERA, and we know the Yankees bullpen. They're great outside of the closer role. They can get that figured out, but I mean, I, I like both these bullpens a lot. Give me the under. It's a, it's a low total, but I think it's low for a reason. We're going to hopefully sweat out a nice little West Coast under. Uh, hopefully one nothing. That would be great. But, Austin, you got your, your third and final pick. It's a player prop. Where are you going? Uh, yeah, Luis Seal owes us money. If you know, you know. Uh, let's dive into the player prop. Yesterday, we had Jackson Merrill's over in HRRs, hits, runs, RBIs. I said you could take the bases. Obviously, they all cashed with this home run. Let's hope this guy can hit a home run, too. It's Brett Rucker. I like him over one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs. Minus 125 on DraftKings. I want to say this was minus 130 on uh, or, uh, on Bet365. I think it was minus 130 on DraftKings. Um, I like it, obviously, up to about minus 140. I really like Brent Rucker. If you're looking for a base prop, you can take it. It's going to be probably plus money, I would imagine. I don't mind that at all. Obviously, I just feel like there's more ways to cash a HRR line than there are just for bases. But obviously, I like Brent Rucker's matchup enough for him to get some hits today. Now, let's talk about Rucker, who is coming into a pretty good streak. Seven-game hit streak, batting 344 during that time span. And he's up to 385 in September. Just the guy that's been seeing the ball pretty well this month. Yesterday, two for five with a home run. Um, today, I really like his matchup against the lefty, Jordan Wicks. Now, Wicks is allowing a 274 batting average to righties. His walk percentage is lower versus righties as well. Obviously, Ricker could walk here. He's, you know, middle of the pack, if not a little bit higher in percentiles for walking. Sure. 
Uh, but lefties, he has a pretty high walk rate there too. And I think he's allowing a three something average, 300 plus average to lefties. So the goal today though, is we need the A's to get some base runners. Cause obviously it's best if Brent Rucker doesn't need to go out there and get two hits or even get hit around. If he can come up with a guy in scoring position, we've seen Brent Rucker do it time and time again, get those timely hits. We've been on the bad side of a lot of those timely hits too. Rooker batting 296 versus lefties. I think he's like 301 against righties, so pretty good. Uh, slightly higher OPS versus lefties, so a little bit more power there. Of these 32 hits versus left-handed uh, pitchers, 16 have been for two bags, 10 home runs in there. I um, think he's had a home run in two straight games, so why not make it three? Um, to righties, we need to look at the pitches that he's going to see. Right-handed pitchers, uh, well, to righties, Wicks is throwing these two main pitches, 48% four seam, and he switches it up 35% changeup, trying to keep the hitters off balance. Rooker's batting average expected versus lefties, 338 versus the four seam, 292 versus the changeup. So really good splits against those two pitches that he will see from Wicks. If Wicks wants to get a little cute and throw some of his secondary pitches, we're looking at about a seven or 8% from the sinker and the curveball. Well, Rooker's expected batting average versus the sinker is 436. So I recommend not throwing that. Curveball, he's only expected batting average is 0 0.029. He's 0 for eight versus a lefty curveball. I mean, sure, uh, it's a pitch that he throws 7% of the time. So if he wants to spam curveballs, go for it and maybe we're cooked. But I'm not too worried about that because Wicks doesn't throw those two pitches for this main reason. His expected batting average on those two, 349 and 601. So obviously those pitches aren't very hard to hit, and that's why he doesn't throw them too often. So we'll see a lot of four seamers and changeups. Brooker does have the tendency to whiff, which can be a little bit annoying, but he's seeing the ball pretty well. So if he can put the ball in play, we know he can do great things with it. And I really like the Athletics matchup today against Wicks. If you look at their stats on the season against lefties, an above average offense, WRC plus and things like that. You look at recently, you might be like, Austin, they've really struggled against lefties. Look at the lefties they faced. They faced Scooble, Valdez, Crochet, and Imanaga. Four of the, I don't know, top six, seven lefties in the game. So they faced some really tough lefties. Did I get Wicks? Got this been struggling recently. Gives up his fair share of hard contact. They could see Rooker doing some damage and the rest of the lineup doing damage. So we can maybe see Rooker get up to the plate five times like he did yesterday. Uh, last note, like I said, Rooker's good at getting those timely hits. Batting 341 with runners in scoring position, which I believe is 14th in the majors. So a really good guy getting those timely hits. That's exactly what we could need tonight. If we get a guy in second, Worker needs to come through with a single. I certainly think he can come through. And if he wants to hit a home run like Jackson Merrill did, we'll appreciate that as well. But those are our four favorite picks of the day. Hopefully we can go 4-0. Let's hope we can continue that momentum from the 3-0 sweep yesterday into today. A recap of our plays, the first one parlay of the day that will be live on odds checker or in the pinned comment down below. It's not, you don't have to pay to see it. You just might have to create a free account with an email. So definitely tap into that. Number two, we have my uh, over in Colorado. We have the over 11 and a half there. We have Logan's under in Seattle. And we have Brent Rooker over one and a half HRRs. Let's have a day. Let's go for now. We'll see you guys back again tomorrow with some more. See you then. Peace.